What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. It's the very first video of the year and I'm stoked to be back at it. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this year is going to be a great one. So for this week, we are going to be making a bomb diffusing robot. So I actually came across this idea well over a year ago from a random artist online, which I can't seem to find anymore, not sure if they took it down or not, but I wanted to make it for quite some time now and I thought it'd be a really fun model to start this year off with. So after deciding to choose this robot as our model for this week, I jumped onto Google Images and started collecting some random reference. Now it seemed like there were different models of this robot and they all looked very similar but also slightly different than one another, which kind of made it confusing, I'm not going to lie. But I thought I would just take parts from each of them that I found interesting and we can just add those details into our own model. Now I definitely decided to simplify a lot of these shapes just to save time and to be honest I didn't know how half of the objects worked on this robot so we're going to just be more or less winging it along the way and see what we can come up with and hopefully we can make it feel more realistic without spending our whole weekend working on it. Now this video is just going to be a time lapse speed modeling type of video but if you're interested in seeing this in real time along with all of the UV mapping process and all of the working files it will all be uploaded to my Patreon page which you can find in the link in the description below. So this is definitely one of those models that's going to look pretty bad for quite some time until we start getting all of our shapes into the scene. So let's focus on blocking things out first and try not to get discouraged with how bad it's going to look and hopefully it will slowly start to look better and more like a bomb diffusing robot. So let's just continue blocking some things out.
Alright, so here is the bomb diffusing robot in its finished form. Now what I decided to do was split this thing up into three different groups, well technically four, for the four different textures that I have applied. Now to be honest with you, I could have combined a lot of these together and I'll go over that right now and I'll show you how and why I split it up. So if I open up my UV editor and I open up my very first group, or actually the very first object, which is its own texture, which is the box. Now, to be honest with you, there's barely any detail on this box. I just wrote some words on the side. So I definitely should have just put this into one of these groups and just combine these UVs together. But just to make life easy for myself, I just decided to separate this into its own texture set. That way in Substance Painter, it can have its own little texture set that I can texture on. I don't need to worry about basically shrinking down these UV shells to fit it into one of the other UV maps. So there's really no reason for this being on its own. I just more or less got lazy and wanted to just wrap up the whole UV mapping process. So I went ahead and just made this its own texture. I'm not gonna lie, I did a pretty sloppy job with the UVs. I could have gone through and straightened a lot of these shells, which I probably should have done just like this. And I could have just cleaned it up a lot more, to be honest, I was rushing this. I just really quickly just unfolded it and just decided to call it a day. So I should have went through and straightened all those shells out and that's something you should always try to do. But don't be lazy like me. All right, so the second group is the tracks. Now, as you can see, there is one red face here and I'll tell you exactly why I did that. So what I decided to do, if you saw the whole modeling process, I just made one track on one side. And then once I was done this, I just basically went up to edit duplicate special and I just mirrored it over to create the other side. Now, while doing that, I decided to add a label on here, just some like track label. And because I mirrored it over, this would show up backwards that same label on the side so what i had to do was just take this one shell and i just flipped it i went up to modify and flip which makes it red red doesn't look good but it does make sense because i don't want my words to be backwards so for this one shell that's the reason why i flipped it and once again the tracks are i could have taken better advantage of this space as you can see there is some empty space here and i could have easily just taken this box like I mentioned earlier and just combined it into this texture set or into one of the other ones. Either way, there is some space I could have taken better advantage of. So I just wanted to make a note of that as well. And there are some things as well like this track, to be honest with you, I could have just straightened this and I should have straightened this. But because I'm not having any texture or any like certain pattern on my tracks, it's not really going to be a big deal. And that's why I just left it like this. I didn't bother straightening anything because it's not, it just saved me time and I knew it wouldn't affect the materials in Substance Painter. All right, moving on, the next group and texture set is the body. And I also combined this back little arm piece as well. So if I isolate this, you'll see there's not really that many objects on the body. And when I originally grouped this as its own group, leaving the arm out, it was just too small and I felt like I could take better advantage of that space. So I decided to take this arm and combine it into the same group. And then the last texture set is the front arm. Basically the last objects in my scene. Now once again, what I should have done is probably, if I were to redo this model, I probably just would have combined the two arms into one group and then the body and the tracks possibly into one group. You really, I could probably get away with just two textures for this and I feel like it would have been fine. But like I said, feeling a little bit lazy and it made just my life a lot easier just making it its own group. So that is how I basically prepared this explosive robot or my bomb diffusing robot for Substance Painter. So now all we have to do is export this thing and we can jump into Substance Painter and start texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. Now this model is gonna be pretty straightforward, similar to every other model we create on this channel. What I'm gonna focus on is just filling in those empty meshes with some sort of material first. I basically just wanna fill them in with something and then I can start refining them and editing the stuff afterwards. I really find if you worry so much about dialing in the perfect material on every mesh right off the start, it can really drag out the whole texturing process. And I wanna spend my whole weekend just texturing this thing. We wanna to try to texture it as quick as we can. So I'm gonna take advantage of all of those smart materials and the materials that come with Substance Painter, and we can fill in these empty meshes with some sort of material, 
So that's what you're gonna see here. I'm gonna try my best not to obsess over getting it perfect. I know I'm not gonna be happy with it, but that's okay. We just need to fill it in and then we can start working on it and refine it afterwards. So if you take a look at the reference, you'll see that these bomb diffusing robots are actually pretty plain looking. They just have simple plain black metal and there's really not much detail going on. There's not many labels. So when it comes to texturing things like this, I always find personally for myself, it's quite challenging because it's just so simple and you need to it's hard to make it look interesting and make it look fun. So what we're gonna do is just fill in some empty plain materials similar to my reference, and then we can come in afterwards and add more dirt and grunge and maybe some custom labels on top of it to make it hopefully more fun to look at. So let's just start filling in these empty meshes with materials and we can slowly texture our bomb diffusing device.
And that is basically everything. That is the whole 3D modeling and texturing process that I did to create this bomb diffusing robot. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel to see more random weekly 3D models. And if you want to see this video in a real time pace, along with the full UV mapping process and all of the working files, all of it will be uploaded to my Patreon page, which you can find the link in the description below. And as always, a really huge thank you to all of my patrons. I really can't thank you guys enough for all of your continuous support. All right, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's video, and I will catch you guys in the next one.